everybody, Dr. Britt Talley Daniel, MD. I'm a neurologist and headache doctor. And today I'm talking a really basic thing in migraine, which is the subject of acute migraine treatment. How do you do that? Well, migraine headache occurs in 12% of the American population. 25% of the cases are women and 6% are men. Uh, migraine headache is the fifth most common cause of disability in the world and the 10th most common cause of a visit to the emergency room. Uh, the three most painful known conditions to man are migraine, kidney stones, and childbirth. So acute migraine treatment. How do we do that? Migraine headaches should be treated at the onset of the headache pain with a triptan. This is advice for fast, effective, proven neurologic headache treatment for migraine. So migraine headache has four phases. It has the prodromes, the early part, the aura, the attack, and the postdrome. Migraine patients should either treat at the prodrome, the onset of the aura, if they have migraine with aura, or at the onset of the attack. Treatment should be with one of the fast-acting triptan drugs, and there are six, five of those. Triptans work for about 80% of patients with migraine. Triptan non-responders, which are a tough group of people, may be treated with ergotamine drugs, like caprogod or dihydrogotamine, DHG, like migranol, and other drugs which have come out called Rayval may be tried. We don't really have any data on that drug long range much. Okay, so the migraine prodrome, what is that? It may come 24 hours before the attack comes on and may consist of fatigue, drowsiness, food cravings, depression, irritability, trouble concentrating, phonophobia, and increased urination or diarrhea. If these symptoms can be recognized by the patient as common and reliable, occurring symptoms, they've had it before, in other words, before the migraine attack comes on, then the patient should treat the headache when it occurs with prodrome at triptan, because that's the early part of the migraine. You want to stop it early. If a migraine with R patient has a visual R before the headache starts, then the patient should treat at the start of the R with a triptan. Migraine visual R is usually last 30 to 20, 30 minutes, but it can last an hour or so before the headache comes on. Treating at program, prodrome or R means the treatment is early and the drug use is more likely to succeed. The problem is some patients have their R at the same time their headache starts. And these patients should treat at the onset of their R, which comes at the same time the headache. But some patients have their R near the end of their attack of headache, but they should have treated at the begin of the headache in those, for those people. Now, only migraine headache patients have the altered brain neurophysiology that leads to the headache, so that 94% of men and 75% of women who don't have migraine don't have these physiologic changes. Only migraine patients do this. The migraine process releases three different neuropeptides, and these chemicals cause arterial dilatation and inflammation of the trigeminal nerves, the arteries, and the thalamus. But triptans, if taken early, will stop this stage of the migraine process. Over-the-counter drugs can't do that. That's why triptans, which came out in 1991 as injectable Imitrex, subcutaneously, 6 milligrams, have been so successful and important for treating migraine all over the world. It can be said that about 80% of persons who treat their migraine the onset of headache, as I mentioned above, will be headache-free in two hours. I mean, everything's over, gone. All right, so what about the triptans? I'm going to give you some thoughts on that. General triptan rules. You're not supposed to use it with a personal with strong family history or coronary artery disease. For people who have TI or stroke, people who have uncontrolled hypertension, you have to limit the dose in children, the elderly. And it should never be given to patients with basilar artery migraine or complicated aura migraine. And you shouldn't mix it with triptans or, with, or take it with ergotamine within 24 hours, not to mix. Unfortunately, there are common triptan side effects, which aren't bad, they don't mean anything that much, but they bother patients, and these are chest tightness or pressure, near fainting, the people will localize it in here, neck back pain, which may be burning, warm or hot, dizziness or drowsiness. Now, on my webpage article at www.drmigraine.com, I have all these triptans listed, their doses, and what's available and how long their half-life is and when you should take them and all. And so go there to look at it because there's just a lot of data that's on the table. Next, I'm going to talk about what I call the migraine timing cycle, which is also in that same article. There are four steps in the migraine process called the migraine timing cycle. The first step is trigeminal inflammation by the brainstem. 
And the second step then occurs in 20 to 40 minutes uh, when the chemical is released and the game of the nerve and the arteries start to release their neuropeptides, which are neurokinin A, substance P, and CGRP. Then about two hours after release of these chemicals, the third step occurs, which is meningeal artery vasodilatation. And the fourth step at three to four hours is inflammation of the thalamus, which is a deep nucleus deep in the center of the brain, which is called the pain center of the brain. The fourth set step is also called central sensitization because steps one and two and three occur in the skull, but they're not part of the brain. They're in the nerves, they're in the ganglia, and that sort of thing. But stage four actually inflames the thalamus, a deep nucleus inside the brain. So um, migraine is defined by the International Classification of Headaches as lasting four to 72 hours. And that's not done for some trivial, abstract, or academic reason using three days or 72 hours as the time a migraine might last, but rather because that's how long these inflammatory neuropeptides stay in the body. I'll see patients in the office and say, well, I had a migraine that lasted five days. Well, I'm a headache doctor. I'm going by the rules here. A, a single migraine can only last three days. And that's usually somebody who's taken too much medicine to make the headaches stand, hang around a little longer. And I'll go into that later. So these neurochemicals come into the brain. They drain down the veins to the liver. And then they're discharged into to toilet after three days. If you treat a migraine with over-the-counter drugs like Advil or Tylenol, NSAIDs and stuff like that, they don't stop the release of the neuropeptides and the inflammation, but tryptans will do that. And that's why they're so important and effective for treating migraine. Patients with migraines should treat with tryptans, but never with opiate narcotics or with drugs like butabatol, like Fioracet. Butabatol is a barbiturate drug, and in my opinion, is the worst drug in the world that will cause medication over your headache. So butabatol has been banned in every country in the world, except the United States and Canada. And the use of the drug in America is a political issue to be resolved by legislature. And so far, neurologists and headache doctors have not been successful in getting rid of it. And there's a joke, it's, it's a sad satirical statement, kind of like a joke, at headache meetings in America where they'll say, the only drug people go from Mexico to the United States to get is butalbital because it's available here, but you can't get it in Mexico. Also, caffeine, Tylenol, Advil, Aleve, and Triptans can cause medication of a headache to take, if it's taken too much. So the general rule in, for migraine patients to prevent medication of a headache is to limit over-the-counter painkillers and Triptans even to no more than two days a month. So medication abuse headache is a current term uh, for persons who have, we use for persons who have chronic migraine from overuse of medicines. This used to be called rebound headache. You'll see, you'll see that on the internet, and it's just an old term. Chronic migraine is defined by the International Classification of a Headache as 15 headaches or more per month, eight of which have migraine features. Episodic he headache is defined as 14 or less headache days per month. Now, if the patient uses over-the-counter medications or, or a tryptan, a transition occurs so that after several migraine headaches that occur within a week or two, every time the patient takes caffeine or Tylenol or a tryptan, the inflammatory neurochemicals are released and they'll stay in the body three more days, and so the migraine process could conceivably become continuous. It's kind of like putting a lighter fluid on a fire that makes the fire continue to burn. Got that? That's the important idea here. If one considers that migraine can generate chemicals that last three days and multiply that, that by two days, the result may be six days of neurochemical release per week. So if the doctor allowed his patients to take Tylenol or a tryptin three days a week, that's nine days with chemical inflammation, more than the seven days a week, and should explain the limitation of all painkillers and tryptins to no more than two days a week. Got it? I have a more thorough discussion of the migraine timing cycle on my webpage, and to get it, just go down to the categories, general migraine, you'll find it there. However, the timing cycle points to the reason why migraine should be treated early with a tryptin, because the patient, after migraine starts, only has 20 to 40 minutes after the onset of pain before the neurochemicals are released, and a tryptin drug will block the release of these chemicals. It's just that simple. Patients don't know to treat early, and therefore the chemicals are released, 
and inflame the trigeminal nerve, the artery of the thalamus. The patient comes back to see the doctor and says, well, it doesn't work. That bag salt you give me doesn't work. It's reported that tryptans will help migraine headache any time during a migraine, but if it's treated late, even if it's treated late, but unless migraine is treated at the onset, the patient won't get headache free within two hours. Headache free means that all the migraine symptoms are gone. The headache's gone, nausea's gone, sound sensitivity's gone, light sensitivity's gone, mental cloudness is, is gone. In my office, I've gone over and over this point with patients to treat early, and then some of them, the next time they come in, they report that that tryptin that they'd been taking didn't work, but the migraine this time now taking early had gone away early. Many patients tell me they get relief within 15 to 30 minutes, which is less than the time reported for the, some of these drugs to work, as according to the FDA. So, related questions here. Why don't patients treat with their migraines early with a tryptin? Hoarding. Patients only get a limited supply of drugs every month, and they don't want to run out. I've got to say them. It's the end of the month. I've only got one max all left. In certain companies, limit sumatriptan 100 milligram tablets to only nine a month. Some insurance companies will only give two triptans per week, and you have to go back and get a refill. And if I write 10 per month, the patient has to go back to the drugstore every week to get the prescription filled. So one study found that 37% of patients with insurance plans that limited the number of triptans per month didn't treat with their triptan at the onset of a migraine. They had more ER visits for headache per year than patients without insurance who are more likely to take the medicine. $10 to $40 per prescription, which can add up if patients take several drugs. However, now all the triptans are generic and cheaper than name brand. And sometimes you can find on the internet coupons that will help you better than your, even your drug insurance plan. Nihilism. Nothing works. Many migraine patients have ingrained previous experience that nothing will work. These are the migraine patients who have been using over-the-counter meds, anti-narcotics, and parbutalbital for years and have developed medication to reduce headache. And tryptin, the nothing will work in that situation except DHE. That's a whole similar article on medication with headache uh, on my blog to when I want to look at that. When these episodic migraines finally t t try their tryptin early, the same drug we've always waited to use, they're pleasantly surprised with how well the drug works. Some come back to their neurologic recheck visit with a smile on their face. They just never knew how to treat their migraine. Fear of overtreatment. They say, I don't want to take too much medicine. Experiment migraine patients know if they take too much medicine, they like the snake on the ground that you try to bash on the head rises up and bites you on the leg, resulting in more headaches. In general, again, if you keep the headache treatment two days a week, it's okay. Then that's true for NSAIDs, opiates, and even the tryptans. Lawrence Neiman, MD, is the director of the Headache Institute at a uh, hospital in New York. Speaking in an interview with Primary Neuro News, was asked the following question. If you had a single piece of advice, you could give to every healthcare professional treating patients with episodic migraines to ensure that fewer of their patients with migraine would progress to chronic daily headache, what would it be? Dr. Newman's response was to limit the number of acute medications that they are giving at one time, not to be liberal with refills so that you keep a close watch on how many medications patients are using and initiate preventive treatment in appropriate patients. If you do that, you can proactively, in many patients, prevent medication abuse headache and the progression of the headache disorder. Another reason not to treat, concern for side effects. So the tryptin treats the migraine, the patient dreads the side effects, the chest tightness, the pressure, near fainting, neck back pain, burning, warm, hot feeling, dizziness, drowsiness. This is where the treating doctor, I think, should explain that tryptin side effects are really not serious. Many patients here in this will gladly tolerate a mild side effect for a miraculous drug that treats migraine. And these patients should be instructed that trips and side effects are dose related and merely decrease the dose, like going from 100 milligrams sumatriptan to 50 may avoid the side effect. If that doesn't work, then the patient is due for a trial of a different triptan. And there are five acute drugs that work in 30 minutes. Another reason they don't treat early, waiting. 
boy, have I heard this. <clears throat> I just wanted to wait and see if it would go away. I wasn't sure it was a migraine. Sometimes they just go away on their own. I was waiting to see if it's going to be one of those. Man, it usually is. This is the old, I'm going to wait and see what happens with this headache game of Russian roulette, patience play, which is unproductive and usually self-defeating. They wait and they lose. Migraine sufferers should consider that 50 to 77% of patients who take a trip in early are headache-free at two hours. Some writers in the migraine clinic in Sweden were quoted in neurology reviews as saying, finding a substantial difference in total pain in early versus late treatment with triptans. They found the difference was greatest with oral triptan treatment as compared with injections and nasal spray. And early treatment had a quote unquote, substantial impact on pain, aura, nausea, photophobia, and sensitivity to sound. Another reason they don't do well with treatment, they ignore nighttime migraines. And these are hard, tough migraines that come on, wake up headaches next morning. The patient will say, I woke up at four in the morning with a headache. What can you do? I just rolled over and went back to sleep. I had a terrible wake up headache the next morning. This is the nocturnal migraine coming at the end of a rapid eye movement event. Many patients with headaches like this wake up in the morning with a migraine still there two or three, four hours later. And they're already at stage four of the migraine process in central sensitization. And the tryptans don't work as well there. These early morning migraines last all day, that day, and sometimes the next. These patients should be instructed to sleep with their triptan pill open and available on the table next to them with a glass of water. Next to the beds, so they can sit up briefly, take their medicine early, and go back to sleep. Also, injectable sumatriptan or intranasal sumatriptan or zolmatriptan may help nocturnal migraines because they work for about 10 minutes as opposed to 30 minutes for the other acute onset triptans. And that's how you should treat nocturnal headache at onset when it's early and mild. Uh, I've got um, another reason why. Why don't they treat? Excuses, excuses. The patient will say, I was at work and left my medicine at home. Well, come on. I was in the middle of an important meeting. I was driving to work. It rained and the freeway was backed up. I had a deadline to get a project finished that day and I couldn't do anything else. I couldn't even eat lunch. Well, I heard that a lot. They don't eat lunch. My dog ate my medication, my term project, my homework. Now, that's a joke. You know, teachers hear that kind of stuff. These are patients who haven't faced up to reality of life. Migraine is a chronic problem. It's genetic and part of their genome. The possibility they get into migraine is always there, particularly if they're aggravating features. Stress, menstruation for ladies, barometric pressure change, skipped meals. The Boy Scout motto is be prepared. And I want migraine patients to be an Eagle Scout. These patients need to have their medicine with them at all times. An attack should come at any time. Get a grip. Treat with the trip to the onset when early and mild. And the last thing I'm going to list here is patients are not well informed. Only 60 to 70% of migraine patients have been given a trip to by their doctor. Just think of that. Only 67% of patients were given a triptan. Because most of these people see the family care or internal medicine doctors. Triptans have been around for years, so they're not new or unknown. And the majority of patients are seen first and treated by their family or internal medicine doctor. Treatment with triptans should start with the primary doctor many times have done. And I have a list of what the triptan drugs are listed on there. So, it's in my talk on acute therapy for migraine. The big deal here is treat early, mainly. Get your doctor to give you a triptan. So uh, please check subscribe. Thank you for listening. God bless all you migrant patients. Hope you do well with this illness. Bye-bye.